Alright, today is Friday, May 7th, and we are start of, on our way to the spring slash summer season for sailing. I just got back from the Home Depot and picked up a couple things on my way back from work, and I always like to play the guessing game as to how many or how much things are going to cost at a Home Depot or Lowe's or Home Improvement store. And I'll let you all pause the video real quick to try to guess how much this is going to cost. This, everything you see in this frame right here. So, believe it or not, this was uh, $207, I believe. Look at the receipts in here. Oh, no, I was wrong. $217. So, $217. So, I'm um, going to walk through some of the things that I got and explanations as to why I got them. So that other people who are purchasing a sailboat or are have a sailboat, might get some ideas on things that they need for their boat. So um, I purchased this toolbox mainly because I have this old school plastic one and it's super unorganized. As you can see, it's one of those toolboxes where it's basically just like a big plastic container just to throw everything in it. And I really like it because it has pockets for everything. So you put screwdrivers and all kinds of stuff inside and out, therefore making things a lot more easily um, seen and accessible. So picked up this. It was 50 bucks, um, but it might be worth it. Um, I got a rubber mallet. Um, I was reading an article on, um, I think, like Cruising World or something about how these are pretty valuable for just random things. Was, I think it was six bucks. Uh, I got a right angle combination square here. I think this was about twelve dollars. So actually, pretty good deal. Twelve bucks, I thought. The, pretty much the highest end knee pads that they had. These are their. These are the Husky like gel. And then I also wanted something that has like, whoop, hello, has like decent grip on them, so that I can wear them potentially while I'm sailing, or I can wear them while I'm up on the deck of the boat. If, you know, we're at anchor or something. I want something that's not gonna be slippery. And a lot of them were like hard plastic, which would definitely slip on gel coat. Whereas this one's almost like the tread of a shoe, which is kind of cool. So. Got two of those, one for each knee, obviously. <laughs> um, I purchased two hole saws. This one is specific for the bilge high water alarm, which is a little speaker that's going to be mounted flush on the nav table. So it, I think it's two and two and one eighths. I think is what it was. And I got a replacement hole saw for one that I broke last weekend. I also, since these are different hole saws than I have, they're Milwaukee, I bought like the Milwaukee hole saw um, uh, drill attachment. This is how you actually attach the hole saw. This thing was expensive, it was 24 bucks. Um, the knee pads are actually pretty pricey too. They are like 40. Um, these of them were like, one was $9, one was seven. Um, and then I purchased a, this is like an electrician snake. Um, also known as a steel fish tape. I've actually never heard of it called that before. But this is for, um, you, it's, a, it's a kind of relatively rigid steel piece that you can pass through things and tie, for instance, a wire or a line on the other end and then pull it through. So this is good for weeding a line through something. So for instance, we're gonna use this for the boom to feed through our reef line, which had, um, is lost somewhere in the middle of the boom. And also this would be really good for running uh, cabling and wiring through, for instance, like there's a lot of wiring that runs through here up into the V-berth, for, for instance. So rather than having to manually, you know, take off each panel and try to get my hand up there and move it around, you can just use this to feed it through. This was, I think, $35. And then I did get a pipe wrench. This is um, something that I haven't had in my tool box and I feel like I'm going to need it at some point. So I just got one of the smaller ones and I think this was maybe uh, $16 or something like that. So um, all in all, pretty good, pretty good deal. And the knee pad's a really big one, especially when you're working on stuff in this boat because it's hard floor and I'm on my hands and knees most of the time when I'm working on things down low uh, as well as up on the deck of the boat. One of today's projects is to install the, essentially if you want to call it, the 12 volt stabilizer. So I purchased this on Amazon for I think $60. It is essentially a 12 volt stabilizer, also called a um, buck converter or a DC to DC converter. 
and it has a 12 volt 25 amp output max and it allows for an input of anywhere between 8 and 40 volts so this is designed uh, essentially to stabilize a voltage or bring a voltage down to 12. In our instance it's more for stabling or stabilizing because right now 13.4 volts and if I want to run my router or any other equipment that is sensitive to voltage then you want a clean 12 volts and you don't want a lead acid 12 volt which ranges rather drastically. So this is going to be installed back behind the um, panel there on the nav table and it's going to run to this uh, switch panel here which has uh, six 15 amp breakers built into it and from that this is going to run to certain voltage sensitive equipment. So for instance router, for instance the charger for our electric outboard, the external Wi-Fi client, and any other things that I deem require a clean 12 volts. And the final recent purchase here is uh, a landscape light. It's a waterproof uh, aluminum, I think it's like a powdered aluminum or powdered steel uh, uh, outdoor landscape light. And it uses the standard MR16 light socket. So it comes with a 20 watt halogen, which is ridiculous. I don't know why anything's halogen these days. But what I'm gonna do is replace it with a RGB MR16, it's a five watt RGB, by a company called Maker Group online. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount it up on the back in the Bimini area, and it will shine down onto the cockpit area. So it'd kind of be dual functionality because I can make it red so that we can light up the cockpit without messing our night vision up. Or it has a, you know, it is an RGB light, so you can make it any color you want. Or it even has a couple party modes, which are kind of cool. So maybe at night, we're hanging out with some friends, put on the party mode, and it makes the boat look kind of cool. And one or two other kind of cool things that I did forget to mention that I got recently. I purchased some safety lock wire, or I think some people call it seizing wire. So it's stainless steel, aircraft grade wire. And this is for uh, shackles. You have that little hole in the, in the shackle kind of, uh, I guess, lug if you want to call it that. Um, and you can feed through this, this wire to lock that shackle in place so that, for instance, if it's on an anchor, you obviously don't want that shackle coming undone when it's underwater, and therefore you would then lose your um, anchor and also potentially on the ground. So this seizing wire or safety lock wire, you feed that through the hole and you're able to wrap it around um, the main part of the shackle and essentially seize that in place. In order to use those, since they're stainless steel, I bought some um, high-end um, Nipex or um, Nipex cutters. So these are rated for cutting that stainless steel. And I do have to admit, I really like them. They're very expensive, $25. <laughs> I think those were about 10 bucks a pop on Amazon, so they weren't too bad. I also have a heat gun, which was given to me by a neighbor who did not need it. So I'm very thankful to that neighbor for giving me a heat gun. Now I can um, use my heat shrink tubing without having to use a lighter. So now first things first, I'm going to transition over from my old school messy toolbox to the new school fabric toolbox with multiple internal and external pockets. So we're gonna do that now before we get started on any projects so I have nice organized tools to start with. Sydney was looking at me like I was a lunatic <laughs> when I was uh, drilling this hole for the bilge alarm, which is very justified in my opinion because why the heck would you be drilling a massive hole in the nav station? But I finally got our bilge alarm mounted. This is the rule bilge alarm. And I'll be honest, I don't really think it's loud enough, and I also don't really think the light is bright enough. It technically, I guess, meets the requirements for a area that does not have a bilge pump that can act as a bilge alarm, but I highly doubt we will be able to hear this outside of the saloon, probably not even in the aft cabin if we have the door shut. So I kind of don't recommend it. Um, I'm kind of disappointed, to be honest. I feel like if you're gonna spend, I think I spent like 60 or $70 on it, um, I feel like it should be a little bit better and louder and, and 
more apparent that there's water somewhere. Um, so for instance, if I want to test it, this is the, the float switch down there. It's that white float switch. And I can essentially just reach down here and hit the test lever. So you can see the light turns on. And obviously it's, it's impossible to tell the volume or the loudness on a camera compared to in real life. I believe it's rated for like 80 something decibels, which it's very quiet. Uh, I guess the good thing is, is I can always just mount a 12 volt siren in parallel with it. It's not gonna cause any issues. So, I, you know, I can, I can do that. I'll probably mount something a lot more louder and might even run something up to the cockpit so that in the event that we're sailing, or we have the motor on or music or something and the bilge fills up and the bilge pump fails or we're taking on more water than the bilge pump can handle, the, we at least have alert that we can hear outdoors. Where are we, honey? We are at Burt Jabin's. Burt Jabin's Yacht Yard mm -hmm. in Annapolis. So we just pulled up. Sydney is on her lunch break for work. She was close by. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I took a little bit of PTO today, and I might, might work a little bit remote. She's doing a little bit of remote work right now, but we took the boat over down uh, Back Creek, and you can see we are at Fort Javen's Yacht Yard. So we're backed in on one of the docks right now, and we are about to get our haul out. For the haul out, we plan to work on the cutlass bearing, which needs to be replaced, and I'm probably also going to work on the exhaust elbow to hopefully fix the steaming issue coming out of the exhaust. 